Hey everyone, Tim with the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor is Junior Mount, and on behalf of Pastor Mount, as I always say, uh, we want to give you an open invitation. On behalf of the pastor, the congregation, and myself, we want to give you an open invitation to come out and be with us for service. We go ahead and give you our service times. We have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11 a.m. We come back at 6 p.m. for our evening service, and we also have our midweek service Wednesday at 7 p.m. So make plans, if at all possible, to come out and be with us for service. If you're uh, not committed elsewhere, uh, just come out and pay us a visit. We'd love to have visitors come in, and uh, uh, we'll make you feel welcome. Uh, if you uh, uh, committed elsewhere or you know, you have a member of a church elsewhere that has uh, service uh, on a different night. Some people have different midweek services. They have it on Tuesday or Thursday. Uh, you know, come and visit, you know, fellow brother and sister in Christ. We'd love to see you. You know, we have, uh, you know, as I've said before, we have fellowship meetings with our other churches we're connected with. But, uh, you know, we only do that every two, couple, two or three months, a peak, you know, apart. Uh, and it's those times we can all come together and uh, uh, worship together, and uh, those are good services. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not even sure when the next one is. We we'll have to find that out, and uh, you know, invite people, you know, to come and enjoy uh, enjoy the blessings of God. You know, it's uh, uh, we have good services. Uh, Lord blesses in abundance. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> I have to excuse me. I got choked a minute ago, and I'm <clears throat> I'm still choking. So, go ahead and turn with me to the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the book of Second uh, Peter, chapter 2, and we're going to start actually at verse 1. Just praying before, the, uh, before I come on here and uh, kind of praying about what should bring to, uh, to the lesson today. And uh, this kind of, this, <clears throat> well, actually the book kind of, of Second Peter kind of just kind of, pop it in my head and I was like okay well must be where I'm supposed to go and kind of looked through it and uh, certain areas and things kind of stuck out and if I kind of bounce around I may not just <clears throat> go just strictly just down I may read a few or and bounce to another chapter not that there's that many chapters there but <laughs> uh, but that just what's you know kind of what stuck out in my mind so uh, bear with me Hope everyone is doing well, and uh, this video finds you well whenever or you see this. If it's if it may be a year from now, uh, as I say, you know, hope that uh, you're blessed and uh, uh, you might get a blessing from the Word of God uh, because it is blessed because it is the Word of God. So um, let's just let's just jump jump right in. Uh, what you know, you know, I'm not going to have 20 minutes of a soapbox or anything like that. Uh, well, no, not today. I don't believe so. I think you're really coming to the, the forefront of what's going on other than just the worldly events, you know, that's all the stuff going on in the world, you know. Uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's no point in getting into that. It's just all worldly stuff and the same old, same old, you know. Uh, uh, you, because we can study God's Word and pretty much tell and say what's going on right now because all the things that are going on we're going to be reading about basically right now. <laughs> so let's get started in Second uh, Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. <clears throat> so it reads, but there, well, what a way to start out the lesson here. It says, uh, but there were false prophets also among the people. Well, this kind of points actually to the church world, does it not? Can this apply to other things? Can this apply to maybe worldly in the world stuff in the world? Don't we have what we might call well? Actually, the next definite the next thing we'll we'll uh, we'll, 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 we'll lump what I'm talking about in that category. It says, but, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. 
And of course, you know, they're talking to the church. You know, Peter's talking to the church. He said even back, you know, back then, you know, he, he knew that, uh, you know, that the, the, the Jews were going to bring in, you know, false doctrine and people's <laughs> other, you know, uh, people and uh, other nationalities, I guess you want to call it, other people was going to bring in their own forms and their own doctrines and mixture of things, of their, uh, basically a mirror image of what's going on today. You know, we have uh, churchianity today going on. <laughs> we have everything in the church, it seems like. Uh, but the uh, in some in some cases, but everything but the pure, undefiled word of God. We've got a man's tradition mixed in, and that's why I've been talking about here lately about being part of the remnant church. You know, you guys have heard me mention it quite a bit lately, and about a rereading of the gospel with fresh spiritual eyes to get out of that churchianity, as I call it, and out of the traditions that have just embedded themselves in the church. Uh, because I want to know, as what we've been teaching and preaching, is it something that has just, that has just been passed down, <clears throat> excuse me, from person to person to person, and just been taught as God's word, but it just has been man's tradition, just based on something that maybe someone has stitched together, or is it based actually on the Word of God? I want, I want to know, don't you? Absolutely we want to know. But we know in today's world, just as Peter was talking, talking to the, you know, the church back then, he's talking to us today as well. You know, how many false prophets that are, my goodness, Look! Look at YouTube. Uh, look at some of these church sites. Look at turn the TV on <laughs> to some of these uh, particular station and uh, some of these other uh, stations on Sunday morning. And uh, yeah, you'll see. Um, not there again. Going to jump in and mention names because you know I don't want. I don't want to do that. I just, uh, you know, let, you know, you judge them by their fruits. You know, that's what, you know, that's what God's word says, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, God being the righteous judge, you know, I've got, I've got to stand for my own self and they're going to have to stand for their self and what they're teaching that, you know, they're going to be held to a higher standard. We that preach and teach are going to be held to a higher standard. So, you know, I've got to be sure I stay in here in the Word of God or at least be able to back what I'm saying up with the Word of God. Amen? Mm. So that should, uh, preachers, teachers, <laughs> yeah, it's a serious thing. Uh, not trying to scare you, not trying to knock you off guard or anything or knock you off the, you know, if, if God's called you, then, you know, His Spirit lead and guide you and you'll be you're going you know that's you'll you'll want to do you know and speak and teach and preach god's word and you'll back it up with you know with god's word let uh you know i've always been a big fan of saying let let the bible interpret the bible so but the false prophets said among the people said even as there shall be false teachers among you uh Believe me, I've I've had my share, <laughs> seen and experienced my share of false prophets, and false teachers, uh, and I know many of you out there uh, listening, uh, or watch the video that will agree with me, and have will have had your share as well, have seen it and experienced it yourself firsthand, uh, I have as well. Uh, says uh, who uh, probably shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought, bought them, and bring upon them swift, or bring upon themselves, excuse me, swift destruction. Probably. 
shall bring in damnable heresies. That's what, well, that's what the enemy does. He introduces just a little bit of a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit of time. You know, there's been people in history, uh, and I'm sure some, you could say some assassins actually do this, uh, poison someone a little bit at a time. You know, just a little bit, a little bit. And you get something that will go, like a food or a drink, that will go with the poison that it can, where it can't be detected when you're eating or drinking or something like that. And I'm always fond of the example, because it's just straightforward, <laughs> uh, of the, the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the rat poison example. You know, the, the uh, rat poison, you know, it's 95% good stuff that the rat eats, and it's five percent poison, bad stuff that's going to kill the rat that he can't detect because of the ninety-five percent good stuff that's in it. So that's what the enemy does. He brings in just a little bit of time. You know, he just doesn't dump all this stuff on because everybody'd be like, "Hey, you no, know, what are you talking about? You know, that's not <laughs> it's not according to God's word." But he slowly over time twists stuff and you know just brings in stuff and everything like that uh well even brother dave brought the message wednesday night like like, like yeah last night <laughs> i think for me what day was uh last night talked about uh you know about people not backsliding just overnight and you know that be it you know it happens over a certain amount of time well the enemy does that over a certain amount of time uh, he's exactly right. You know, it just it, it takes, you know, a little bit of time. You know, uh, but yeah, sure. No people just uh, just all of a sudden one day just stop coming to church. But that's just part of it. You know, it's talking about totally getting away from the Word of God. It's not just coming to the building. Talk, we're talking about actually getting out of the will of God and backsliding and going. You know, I mean, it's totally out of the will of God. Uh, you know could be into the, to the point that you go into apostasy and you know to the point even maybe <laughs> that you reach the point that God turns you over to a reprobate mind Lord help we don't want to see that and you know don't want to ever see that for anybody uh, especially anybody and you know unfortunately for seeing people that's got to that point uh, Oh, do I know for sure that they've turned or been turned over to a reprobate mind? No, I can't say that for sure. Do I know that they've just totally just just got out of the house of God and just went haywire? And yeah, I know that. So, but all we can do is pray for them, try to talk to them. Uh, you know, uh, what else can you do? You know, you <laughs> can't arm bar them, put the arm behind their back, and bust them through the door of the church, and you know just. And, you know, just high step them to the altar and push them down. You know, you can't do nobody like that. You know, that's didn't going to do any good anyway. Uh, Got to be by, you know, the, by, the, by the stirring of the Holy Ghost in their heart, leading them to that altar of repentance, you know. Uh, and I've seen, I've seen, you know, people coming to the Lord, you know, uh, of of late and, you know, thank the Lord for it, you know. have been, been praying and we're still praying, you know, for people, you know, family members and, uh, you know, friends and uh, to come to the Lord and uh, come back, you know, to the Lord. Uh, because, uh, you know, like I said, it uh, people, we are uh, in the last days. And uh, I was talking about, uh, actually, we were talking about it uh, today. Uh, me and Brother David uh, talking about today, and they mentioned it last night in the message, talking about the falling away, and uh, you know uh, we talked about again not not using that as an excuse or a, a crutch, uh, uh, you know for you know just like well you know these you know, we're in the falling away so oh well you know you know no we're not to not to do that no we're if anything that should spurn us on you know pushes forward you know you know try to gain as many more as we can and uh, 
a lot of fire in under us, if you want to put it that way, that's a good way to put it, uh, a lot of fire in under us to, uh, to uh, much more pray harder and uh, work in the field harder uh, to, uh, to get these people in uh, or you know or just or get them to the altar of repentance even if it's not you know even if it's not them coming to the word of life church you know as long as they you know repent turn from the you know turn from their wicked ways and turn from their sinful ways repent you know get saved or come back to the Lord you know you know and uh, go to a different church or you know what whatever you know just as long as they get saved or they repent and you know get out of their perpetual backsliding you know is the word of god says you guys know, talked about israel and their perpetual backslidings uh in the old testament uh and you know what an example that was each time they backslide the lord would turn them over to their enemies you know but what could he do you know it's the same way with us you know what what, what Dude, the Lord's not going to bless your sinning. That's one of the, the statements I've heard, and I've said it before. A, a, a statement that come out of a friend of mine's mouth one time. He was having, he was having some work done, and it was going to be cheaper. The guy gave him a break or something, like, and it turned out it didn't turn out very well being with because the guy made a mess of it. But anyway, that's, that's <laughs> that. That was kind of the end of the story, the, the the far end of the story. But the guy says to end up and said, well, no, I'll do this for this much since you can't afford much. And so, you know, uh, it was kind of slanted toward me because, you know, I was, I promote, you know, that, you know, if the doors of the church are open, then, you know, I think if you're a member that you should be there, you know. And, uh, you know, not that being in the church doors and that in the building is what's keeping you saved you know understand that but no if you're a member of the church you should be there and support that church your brothers and sisters the pastor you know and you know that's just part of it um but anyway uh the statement that come out of his mouth was see even even in your rebellion god's going to bless you i just kind of looked at him and blinked i was like not a what? <laughs> so, and he's just, he's just you know just grinning from ear to ear, and I, I I guess I was I got ready to to lay out some things and it's like uh, you know like number one and just go from there. But something happened and uh, we didn't get a chance. I don't I don't exactly remember uh, that he wife did it had to leave or something like that and he left and was telling her goodbye i didn't get a chance to say anything and it kind of got left just hanging in the air but i still remember that to this day him saying that that still pops in my head every once in a while even in your rebellion the lord's gonna bless you i was thinking no i said you know and he he the very 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 time or the very guy told me no i know the bible you know, you ain't me. You know, very many people they can get me on anything when I uh, when they trying to talk Bible to me because I know the Bible. Well, I was thinking, if you know the Bible, then you know that Israel and their backslidings, the Lord turned them over to their enemies when they backslid and their rebellion. The Lord didn't bless them when they chose false gods to worship false gods and you know uh, didn't want God to rule over them. They wanted a king to rule over them. A rule, rule over them and you know chose the way of the other nations and you know and not God and rebelled against him then he turned them over to their enemies didn't, didn't protect them you know and uh, sure to a certain extent he'll 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 keep he'll keep you afloat a little bit I think if you want if you want to call it that uh, keep you afloat to a certain extent uh, to where you know that you're not totally sunk, basically. Uh, uh, or sometimes he may just let you go down all the way down into the miry clay, <laughs> you know, of sin. Uh, and, you know, you, you know, he, you know, he can reach way down. He does that. He can reach way down. And he does for people. It's way, way down. and pulls them up. God, I, I think I can safely say, and the Word of God can back this up when I say this, 
that God is not going to bless you in your rebellion against him? Does he kind of keep you protected to a certain extent? Sure. You know, uh, you can probably back that up too. To a certain extent, he, he sort of protects you. Uh, but as far as blessings when you're in his will, no, it's not definitely not going to be the same thing. That's, you know, if he'd known his Bible the way he said that he, you know, he was thinking about the, uh, wasn't even thinking about that. He was talking about grace. You know, his version of grace is a version of grace that you do whatever you want to. You sit at the house on Sunday mornings and, you know, you just, you know, uh, you can foul mouth and you know I'm just saved no matter what I do say no matter what it's just save 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 grace 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 no matter what you know just a minor version of what I call you know the, the hyper grace movement that's out there right now uh, you know I just that's <laughs> what else can you say uh, if a person believes that you know they are I, and he told me you know this 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 a person told me once time, you know, is out there, I'm saved no matter what, and there's nothing you can say that'll make me believe otherwise. I was like, okay. Well, you yeah, know, that's okay. You know, I wasn't trying to make him, you know, I was just trying to show him that, you know, that, hey, look, God's word says this. If you do this, you know, but if a person's got their mind made up, what can you do? It has to be God that shows them. All you can do is just point the stuff out in God's Word. Uh, but there again, what we've come back around here to get to is if you have a person that's a false prophet or a false teacher that's bringing in privately damnable heresies, so even denying the Lord that bought them. The Lord didn't say, you know that yeah, he the Lord he died it but it was he you know said denying the Lord that bought them it was a precious price to pay his blood that was spilt on Calvary precious so how anybody could just <laughs> just make a cheap grace thought out of the death of Christ I that bothers me. That you know, that's one of those deals where I just want to back up away from the person, you know, and look what look out for the lightning that's striking some, you know, <laughs> uh, or waiting for the, waiting for the lightning to strike. But um, it's uh, there again. What can you do? All you can do is tell people just so deluded and and deceived these days I, I know this is I don't know for some reason this is just in, in me just he don't like his message he don't like his message at all talk about oppression depression pushing pushing pressing against his message oh he don't like he don't want to hear this he don't want this getting out and that's good because that's this makes me want to put it out even more but <laughs> he he's trying to bring in these and he's and unfortunately in a lot of ways he's being successful in bringing these messages and these damnable heresies and these false doctrines and getting these false prophets and false teachers and planting them in the church thank the Lord that we still have a few churches that are still left that are still preaching and teaching the true doctrine and the true salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ and are still walking and talking and they're still by definition a Christian and they're Christ-like. Uh, do we have room to move up? Absolutely. We'll, we, we'll all have room to move up until the day that we're out of here. You know, whether we're called or catched, or, you know, called away by the, you know, you know, after the uh, dead in Christ rise first, and we that are alive and remain. Whenever, whenever that happens, not going to get into the discussion or argument over or debate over that when that's going to happen, or we go by the grave. We'll continue to grow 
in the Word of God, and I want to until the day I'm out of here. I don't want to just stop at a certain point. No, I want to, man, I want wisdom and spiritual knowledge and understanding of God's Word more and more each day. Uh, that, you know, study and pray and read and, you know, more and more. Uh, I want more than understanding. I mean, I'm beyond understanding, I want understanding, you know, and wisdom and knowledge. Uh, not so I can be up here above everybody else. No, nothing like that. It's because for, for me, for my own wisdom and knowledge, and, and we'll be an evangelist there too, to be a better preacher or a better teacher for the Lord. To help gain more for the kingdom. That's the goal, right? You know, that's the calling, what's for, you know, to seek and save that which is lost. Of course, I always say in tandem with that, that's why, you know, it said the Lord was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. I always link those two together. Because, you know, that's what it said. You know, he come to seek and save that which is lost, but I also said he come to destroy the works of the, of the enemy, of the devil. We're to do the same thing. And that's what we do when we preach and teach the word of God. And, you know, we break the hold that the enemy has on a person when they hear the word of God and the spirit of God is flowing and it talks to their heart and it leads them and it breaks the enemy's hold on them. It leads them to the altar of repentance. Man, that's good. That's wonderful to see. You know, not not because you can go, ch -ching, you know, that's one more so added to my account that I, you know, that I, I want. No, it's not that. It's because someone's come to an altar of repentance and is gaining forgiveness or getting saved. They're coming back to the Lord or coming to the Lord for the first time, and that's wonderful. You know, just one more, one more for that, but one more for the kingdom. But we got to be careful. We've got to be, you know, as you know, wise as serpents, harmless as does. We've got to understand and know and have a, well, a clear vision ahead and see the trip lines, you know, the, well, say the snares of the devil, you know, but I say, I see them in my thinking, just, in my, you know, thinking about trip lines, you know, you see, uh, like, you know, when you're crossing, boom, you know, bomb or something like that. So I see the snares of the devil, you know, ahead. Uh, you got to understand, you got to outthink him and see the stuff ahead he's trying to put ahead and people trying to plant stuff, you know, and you know something's not right. The Lord is speaking to you you know, through the spirit and saying this is not right and something you know is not right and uh, and I'm not trying to make you get suspicious and now you're going to make, make you start looking at everybody beside you saying, huh, I wonder if this person's going to try to bring in a false doctrine or something. I'm not trying to do that. Uh, but don't, but there again, don't, you know, you've got to know God's word. you got to study and know God's word for yourself. Study to show yourself approved. Amen. You've got to know God's word because if you don't know it for yourself, then you can be easily manipulated. You can be easily uh, deceived. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen that before. Uh, you know, uh, preached at a uh, filled in because they didn't have a, a preacher in, and I was one of several that filled in for a while. I think I filled in for uh, a couple uh, Sundays uh, and a Wednesday, Wednesday, a couple Wednesdays, I think, I believe, at a church and uh, was uh, set in their Sunday school as well. And uh, it, 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 it really surprised me. And I, I'm not going to give names or the, or the church or anything like that. I'm, I, don't, like I said, I don't do that. But it, it shocked me because they were teaching, this guy was teaching Sunday school. And it was older people, all older people, that you would think would know or that should know the Word of God. But they were asking questions of stuff and said they didn't understand it that I've seen young people now I'm talking young young people like 
uh, <laughs> I mean, like maybe even preteen young people have an understanding of. And these older people were asking asking the Sunday school teacher questions of that nature. Uh, I don't mean to, I'm not downing them. It just amazed me. It was like, so that's, that's why I said, you know, you were to study ourselves to show ourselves approved. We're to study ourselves so we'll know these things. Uh, it just, you know, it, it, it bothered me to think, I was like, that they don't have an understanding why, you know, that, you know, being this, of this age, they should, they should know, uh, you know, already know the word of God. And uh, it, it just bothered me. You know, like I said, I, I wasn't thinking, well, I know that. Like, I know, I already know that. You, you know, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't, I wasn't approaching it that. It, it just bothered me. You know, it upset me. Uh, thinking, well, these 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 poor people, you know, they, you know, but uh, but the good news is, you know, in this uh, in, in in that part on the good note, uh, let's see when was it? Driving, uh, I want to say, uh, I think we were driving by there or back. Oh my goodness. Uh, can't remember when it was. It must have been on on, on a server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was. We were. We were. Went to uh, visit a church. Past that one, one Sunday morning, and on the way back from that one after service, we passed that church, and uh, they had a pretty close to a pretty full parking lot. So, at, and at the time though, they were when I filled in there, they were down pretty low, and it didn't look very good for them. They, it was looking like they were almost going to have to close their doors. Uh, but we came by there, and like I said, their parking lot was like it was, it was, there was a lot of people, and they, and they were still people uh, leaving out. So I don't know how many had left out by the time we passed by there. And we was like, well, praise the Lord. It's like that they, they, they're going to, I think they're going to make it. Uh, got them a pastor and everything. I was like, you know, praise the Lord. So, you know, worked out good. Uh, Lord blessed, you know, we was praying for him. So, so a good end to the story there, you know, and like I said, I don't want anybody to think I was downing them. I, I it just, it just surprised me and bothered me that's, you know, that, but, and I know there's people that, that are older that have just come to the Lord that don't understand, but people that say that, but well, I've been in church all my life, but yet don't have the understanding that they should because they've not spent time in the Word of God like they should and that's where the rub is that's where the problem is that's where the false prophets and false teachers are gaining some because these false prophets and teachers will bring in these heresies these false things and oh they'll, 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 they'll sprinkle a little bit of truth in it absolutely but you know They'll twist it just enough to make it sound good and put a little bit of truth in it. And they've got you. <laughs> it says even denying the Lord that bought them, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. You know, that's pretty that's that's pretty substantial right there. When you say that, so even denying the Lord that bought them, that's pretty serious. <laughs> the bringing in heresies and lies, you know, mixed with a little bit of the truth, enough to even deny the Lord. Now, you know, a lot, a lot of the uh, the Judaizers, Judaizers, <laughs> pronounce it right. Uh, did that brought in a lot of the tried to bring in a lot of the law back into the early churches uh, we're seeing that again today uh, not all not all of them uh, but a lot of the uh, which and I mentioned this before uh, you know the uh, the Hebrew roots movement and a lot of people are trying to get away from that because uh, some of it uh, there again uh, just like 
just like some of the churches and denominations it goes from the different extremes uh, you have some that are that even totally go back to the entire whole law saying you keep every bit of the law or you you know along with you know uh, grace you know and uh, I mean all the way to you know to uh, you know it is it's one end of the of the spectrum to the other uh now i think of course you know you, you follow the, uh, the, the uh of course the commandments you know with you know there's more than 10 commandments uh you know the lord came and said you know he to to fulfill not to destroy the law but to fulfill it and some you can you a lot of times you can it, when you fulfill something it means it's it's you know, fulfilled and it's done. Other times, when you mean fulfill something, it means fulfill it as a continuance. So you can look at it in that way too. Uh, so, but uh, by you know, by doing, by being a Christian, you are still fulfilling <laughs> the things that God mentions in the Old Testament, the commandments, um, in many, many different ways. Now there are people who keep uh, the feasts. Now that's the ones I think actually uh, that I agree with, and uh, even I wouldn't mind even trying doing that myself, uh, just because of the holidays. Even though from my childhood, you guys have heard me say this before. <laughs> I was younger, loved the holidays. You know, well, like. You know, of course, my two favorites, you know, like Halloween and Christmas, of course. You know, you know, wasn't big on any of the other ones, you know. I could do without Thanksgiving or, you know, any of the others, you know, July the 4th and all that, you know. But, uh, you know, but I couldn't wait for Halloween, you know, trick or treat, and of course, Christmas and presents and all that, you know, being young. But, uh, you know, and got old and realized, realized where these come from and everything like that. And seeing, some of these uh, people uh, are actually doing the uh, the feast times instead of the uh, and going by the different calendars you know the instead of the Gregorian calendar that that we use the that was put forth by Pope Pope Gregory um, they're using a different calendar and uh, actually like I said keeping the feast as their holidays feast holidays talking you know that the Torah speaks about you know the Torah the first five books of the Bible uh, I don't see anything wrong with that you know you know you're not leaning on it for your salvation you know the Lord Jesus and grace through faith is you know that's our salvation uh, but you know you celebrate you know uh, through the feast and uh, you know uh, so I don't see anything don't see anything wrong with that um, like I said, you're not leaning on it and, and 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 saying if you don't keep this that you're that you're lost. You know, there's some people that are saying if you don't keep that along with that you're lost. So I can't say that. But see the next verse goes along with what we're saying about that. And it said in verse two, it said and many talking about what we're just talking about and talking about in verse one, it said, Many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of wow see what i'm saying so they're you know they're they're, they're creating these false doctrines and they're you know just creating just out of you know just by way of the you know by the enemy planting you know the, the stuff in their mind and uh you know you know you do this and do this and put a little bit of the bible here put a little bit of you know God's word here, and you know everything. Uh, you know, like I said back in the back in the day when it was talking about, you know, a lot of it was, you know, the the Judaizers were trying to bring back the law back into the church, and uh, uh, like I said, I believe other stuff as well. You know, you got to remember during this time period, you know, talking about the, uh, uh, especially the Romans. You know, they had. Uh, uh, many a god that they worshipped, and uh, you know there were other uh, nations that worshipped false gods and such. 
but uh, really speaks to us today as well because we're seeing seeing all this as well. Wow, uh, seeing many follow these people, uh, hook, line, and sinker. You know it. Fallen. I mean, it, uh, you know, heard that you know a lot of people say this. Heard their pastor say this, and I've I've, I've thought about this, and uh, me and my father's talked about this. You know, these people out there that uh, are on social security and don't pull hardly anything, and they're maybe by themselves. You know, like a like a little lady. You know, that's alone or something, and you know just gets just enough to get by. But yes, she's watching this person on TV saying, you know, you're going to, you're, you're going to get this huge financial blessing, you know, no, if you don't, you know, and if, if you don't send me something, you know, you, the Lord's not going to bless you if you don't send me this seed offering, if you don't see so by faith, you know, and, uh, you know, you send me this amount and I'm going to send you this little vial of oil or a prayer cloth that I personally, I'm personally going to pray over. And this, you know, this person that can't afford it, can barely afford to live, sends this person money. And, you know, I, that, that, in, that infuriates me. Because, you know, they, you know, they, they've done exposés on this and found out and saw all these things, you know, people, you know, just, but they just open these letters and basically look if they don't have any if they they grab the check or money order whatever's in it and they just they dump the rest that infuriates me you know they get the address of course and then you know they send them you know send them what they promised but that's all you're going to get Saying, well, brother, what's you know, what's what's different? You know, don't you do that church? Don't you pray over stuff and send prayer cloths? Yeah, absolutely. But do we charge for it? No. <laughs> do we have an offering? Sure. Can you, you know, if you want lights and you want air conditioning and and heat, yeah, you got to kind of got to take up an offering to to kind of run that. You know, unless you want to sit in the dark and freeze you know and, and or and or burn up you know <laughs> got to kind of take up an offering to run things but you know we're not going to say you know plant this seed offering and we're going to give you these prayer cloths and or these you know vials of oil that you know that that we've personally prayed over you know <laughs> but people do that people fall for that and you know that just that that bothers me that just bothers me that that uh that makes me, you know, that infuriates me, and it, uh, toward these people that pull this stuff, and at the same time, it makes me sad to the point of almost wanting to weep for these people. Like I said, thinking about a, 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 a you know, the, just this lonely little lady that's, you know, that's just that barely can live. On well, it's what she pulls from Social Security. That you know, husband's passed away, maybe no children or. Children don't come around, don't take care of her, or something like that. And, and you know, some, that's I, I need to talk about because it it's just, mm. but many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And what we were just talking about through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. You know what? I've got enough to answer for myself today. Judgment, you know, I'm saved. So you know, I'm gonna hear. As, as I always say, I'm gonna say it each and every. If I can remember, it's for me and my house. We're gonna serve the Lord. But you know, I've got enough to answer for for myself. I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. But you know, I've got enough. I've got an answer for for myself. Can't answer for anybody else. But, you know what? I would not want to be in the shoes of some of these people out there that do some of this stuff that they do. But the people that I was just talking about, the people that's, that's 
and that's doing this stuff right here that's doing this stuff today you know this did that stuff back then but doing this stuff right today you know nothing new under the sun <laughs> it was back then it's just, it's just it's continued same way through history it's just it's amazing you know God's word is is from everlasting to everlasting if it if it's going on you can find it in God's word oh I mean it doesn't go into in a lot of ways into each individual detail of something well it may make a generalized statement and all the stuff that you might find it'll fall in under something like that you know under that statement but you can find it in there that's what we're talking about right here a lot can fall under what we're talking about right here Ooh. it says whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not you know as I said I've got enough to answer for <laughs> for my past uh, myself thank the Lord for salvation and grace amen but as I said would not want to be would not want to be one of these people that that do this that you know are probably so deceived themselves you know I, I, I wonder while we're sitting there while we're sitting there just you know thinking on these things <laughs> see law if they're so deceived they're believing that this is how God wants it this is how God wants to bless them. They believe that putting the weight on the people that they're talking to to send them money, that's how the Lord is wanting to bless them. You now you wonder, what's going through these people's heads? Or are they just so full of the devil and maybe even been turned over to that reprobate mind that they just don't care you know you don't know it's uh you know it's not for me to say I, I can uh, you know I can watch people can be sh unless the Lord shows you of course you know um uh, But, uh, well, there again, I need to back up. I need to be the watchman. Just speaking for myself. Just speaking for myself. I need to be the watchman that God has called me to be. When I see something like this going on, then I need to do the job. Just speaking for myself personally. And I'm kind of getting stirred up. Ooh. <laughs> After talking about some of this stuff, getting really stirred up. <laughs> talking about some of this be the watchman that God has called me and I see some of this stuff going on be that watchman and that man of God that God has wanted me and called me to be and bring it into it expose it bring it to the forefront do something about it don't just sit on my hands and let, some, let something uh, come to pass or let something go on that's not right. You know, the, the pastor or the shepherd, you know, the, and the shepherd has a chief shepherd, the Lord. But the shepherd watches over the flock, right? And if the wolf comes, he fights off the wolf, right? Make sure the, uh, the flock is safe and secured and everything. Believe that, you know, the watchman and everybody knows what the watchman did in the Old Testament it was up on the wall and we saw the enemy coming he blew the the shofar you know the horn everything and uh, <laughs> it's kind of uh, I've seen people I've seen some people do it that that celebrate I was talking about that that live or the, that do the feast days in the Old Testament heard them online blow the shofar and actually I was in a church one time and it's the first time I've ever heard that during the praise and the worship the pastor was on the front seat and we were kind of toward the back. We were just visiting this church 
and during the praise and worship, all of a sudden the pastor pastor reaches down and brings up this shofar. You know, it's a it's a horn. I think it, you know it's it's an animal's horn, and he brings it up and blows it real loud. It was like just couldn't believe it. We ne never never had heard or seen that before. But getting back, that's what the watchman did. He saw the enemy coming. He blowed at the horn to let the people know that the enemy was coming. So, being a watchman, that's what you do. When the enemy's coming, you let the people know. But what do you do when the enemy's among you already? Now, I'm not saying this toward anybody in particular. I'm just, you know, examples and, you know, using hypothetical examples, you know, and everything. The enemy's already among you bringing in these things. You've got to put a stop to it. You have got to confront toe-to-toe, -to -toe, sister of the night, bringing in, talking about, you know, she by you know by prophecy talking about standing toe to toe with the enemy and that's right that's absolutely true that's what we I, and that's a, I, that's what I preach and that's why I teach you stand toe to toe against the enemy nose to nose and you don't give an inch they, you fight against him when he's bringing in your false prophets your false teachers damnable heresies the people following the pernicious ways the covetousness using feigned words and making merchandise of you <laughs> you stand toe to toe against the, against the enemy and, and remember remember what I always say do not just focus Don't just focus on Satan, okay? Yeah, I know he is the big baddie, okay? Yeah, but you got to remember, he can only do what the Lord allows him to do, amen? Same way, but you got to remember too, we are dealing with other spiritual or supernatural enemies, okay? I'm still not going to be afraid to use that word supernatural. That word's been hijacked. I'm, I'm not scared to use it, okay? Okay. Uh, you know, I know that, like I said, it's been hijacked and people are afraid to use it. I'm not going to be afraid to use it. Just because these people that do this other stuff and ghost hunt and stuff like that, that's the, that's the word they used. Or they use. so no, don't worry about that. But don't be afraid to stand against the enemy. Like I said, we've got to more with the, there's you know fallen powers you know there's demonic entities you know fallen angelic powers there's more stuff that we got to deal with you know and as I said that's one of the that's one of the tricks of the enemy he says focus on me but don't focus on what's going on back here and everything that's the demonic spirits that come and try to oppress and depress I say all the time that before I get ready to do something before I get up to stand to teach or to preach or to do a video or to witness to somebody or to sing or to whatever for the Lord the enemy comes to try to oppress and depress when you try to do something to help somebody try to witness to somebody he comes to oppress and depress the demonic spirit to do that seducing spirits as I say and talk about spirits of many you know each one, which one can do a different thing they can come and do many different things as I've said in the past many times people think that they're hunting ghosts they're not hunting what they think that they're hunting and when they're contacting something they're not contacting what they think that they're contacting and I think some of them have actually turned around and understand finally what they're actually dealing with they really don't want to admit it, but they think they finally come around and understand. And now they don't mess with it. Still don't want to come to the point and recognize God and, you know, the Lord Jesus and, you know, Christianity and everything like that. They just don't want to admit it. But uh, they do stuff to themselves. They've got a demonic attachment because they are messing around with stuff they shouldn't have been messing around with. That's one of the things the Old Testament talks about. You know, it talks about not messing around with this stuff. 
<laughs> if God put God put a prohibition on it and put it and said don't do this, don't try to do don't try to do this, like necromancy, talking to the dead, divination stuff like that. There's a reason He said not to do it. <laughs> don't don't you don't you agree? You know, if He says not to do something, there's reasons why He said not to do it. <laughs> it's a it's a bad thing to do. So, in closing tonight. Think I got off what Lord, like I said, the enemy's tried. He tried to fight through this whole, whole message, whole lesson, and I hope I got out what the Lord wanted me to. But I, I feel that I, I feel that I got out and broke through that spiritual stronghold. That's that's another thing. The strongholds of the enemy. Uh, that's a spiritual thing right there to study. Right there is a stronghold of the enemy. Um. Keep watch. Keep watch. You men, you women of God, be those that watch. Because more and more of the false prophets and false teachers are, you know, we're seeing people deceived. I know we're seeing people turned around, you know, maybe one you know that and and the lord did a lot of time you know he, he did he preached to multitudes at times but other times too he worked one on one with people you know the woman at the well you know the woman caught in adultery you know and uh you know he just, sometimes he just spoke one on one with people that was recorded you know in the the, the gospels and uh that right there is that's amazing to me thinking about that you know the God of all reality <laughs> and all creation the one true and living God uh, that, that that doesn't give him enough glory what I'm saying right there you know and honor and praise to what I say I, I can't I can't form the words to give him enough honor, glory, and praise to what I say, to what I mean, what I feel when I say that. For him to speak to just one of his creation, one person, to show his love. But he did to me. I bet he did to you if you're saved. There's others that he will, if we'll pray. We've got family members, we've got friends, loved ones. That need help, that may be hurting, that may have given up on people, given up on the Lord, given up on themselves, are in in a spiritual prison that the enemies put them in. Some may be an actual prison themselves, you know, a real prison. Um, but let's do. Let's do what the brother brother Dave was talking about, as we mentioned earlier, talking about let, let's let's light a fire in under each and every one of us, as he mentioned last night in his, in, his, in the Wednesday night service. Let's light a fire in under us and let's 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 up let's up our game. <laughs> let's up our game. We need to because you know we don't know. We just don't know when that you know that. Like I said, you know, some things take some time to do, as talked about. Uh, other things, you know, we have examples in the Bible where kingdoms fell overnight in the Old Testament, talks about. So, you know, something can happen. Um, you know, bombs can drop and, some, you know, something can change just like that. You know, I'm not trying to be a, a doomsayer. Or anything, you know. If you mention something like that, people say that you're a doomsayer, or oh, I'm not going to use that word. So I don't want to. People misinterpret it, but people say you're. Uh, well, uh, that's just a good word. You're a doomsayer or a prophet of doom, and you're, you know, it's you're just speaking, you know, just oh, you know, a gloom and doom, and you know, and everything like that. 
But, you know, well, you've, you've got to talk about it because, you know, the end, we're in the, the end of days, you know, the, uh, as far as on this side of reality, you know, but, you know, there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth, you know, but we're going to have that glorified body. You know, all things are going to be made new. And, you know, we, nothing can compare to what we, you know, to what it, what it is right now. I mean, it, it just, it, it can't compare. There again, I couldn't form, <laughs> I couldn't form the words and convey how wonderful and what it's going to be like. But just know that it's going to be, it'll be worth it. Whatever you have to go through in this short amount of time that we have in this life. Hey, look. This life, our life is but a vapor. It's like, you know, like the blade of, you know, like a blade of grass, you know, it's grown one day, the next day it's hewn down, cut down. It passes about like that. Hey, look, yesterday I was, I was 19, 20 years old. I blinked and here I am 45 years old. Where did it go? Where does time go? It's, you know, and I'm, it, 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 it's going to be the same way. If I live that long, I'm going to blink and I'm going to be, it's going to be another 20, 25 years down the road. If we have that long. Or if I have that long. As I said, I'm not guaranteed another five minutes on this planet. You're not either. Unless the Lord says that you've got something to do next year <laughs> or 15 years down the road, then you're going to be here because the Lord, if the Lord said something like that, that you're going to be here because you have something to do, then I guarantee you're going to be here if the Lord said you are. But if the Lord hasn't said something like that to you, then you have no guarantees. You have no guarantees. The other day, and I'm going closer. The other day, and I passed by, and I knew what happened. I didn't know the full circumstances of what happened, but I saw down the road here from where we live. I passed by and looked and saw where a wreck had happened. You know, you can see on the road the oil and the gouges and where something happened. Found out there was a 19-year-old uh, a girl that ran off the road and overcorrected, come back on. Anyway, she ended up dying. You know, I guarantee when she left the house, she didn't think, that she was going to go down the road and she was going to wreck and die. Do we, when we leave the house, do we, when we lay our head on our pillow at night, that, you know, we know we're going to wake up the next morning? No, we don't. So, brother, you're trying to scare me? No, I'm just trying to tell you the truth. The truth of our existence that we don't know <laughs> for five minutes from now if we're going to be here in the, on this side of eternity. The question is, is when you go to that other side of eternity, where are you going to spend eternity? If you've asked the Lord to come into your heart and save you and you've repented from your sins and you got saved, I know where you're going to be. You're going to be with the Lord for eternity. So where I'm intending on going. I want to hear, enter in, thou true and faithful servant. People that's unsaved, are going to hear, depart from me, ye that work in equity, for I never knew you. As I say always, and it always boils down to this, and you can go, it's like you can't go any further than, than this. It's going to come down to you hearing one of these two phrases, enter in or depart. That's it. So which one do you fall under right now when you or whenever you watch this video at that point when you hear this when you hear the words that I'm speaking right now at that point where do you fall into that category are you going to hear enter in or are you going to hear depart the decision and choice is up to you if the Lord's calling you don't turn him away Turn to him before it's ever last too late. You're not guaranteed another five minutes on this planet. So I hope whenever you see this video that you're saved. If not, I hope you'll turn to the Lord before it's ever last too late. Hope this video was a blessing. Hope you get something out of it. And uh, uh, if you're not saved, 
I pray that the Lord will speak to your heart and he'll save you and that he'll give you blessings in abundance. And we'll be praying for you. Pray for us. Pray for the churches and all the people that are truly serving God. Pray for those that are not, that they'll come back to the true way of serving God. And I'm talking about the way that God's word says we're to serve God and the beauty of holiness and, you know, walking God's will the remainder of our days. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you. Blessings in Christ on each and every one of you. You spiritual warriors, continue to pray. I know the day is the third, you know, those last day of those ritual days. More to follow. I'll be bringing more to the table. Uh, bring more alerts as they come up uh, for prayer, for call, calls to prayer on these ritual days. So uh, keep an eye out for them. Your prayers are much appreciated on those because uh, it's a serious thing. So at any rate, uh, take care and uh, we will see you in the next video.